right, so our lesson today is going to be on nonfiction books, and I'm going to give each one of you today a little book to look at. Does anybody know um, a word that means nonfiction book? It's another word that starts, well, you going to say one? Um, I was thinking, like, it was like... It's a very hard word, and it starts with an E. Has, has anybody ever heard a word that starts with an E that means nonfiction? The word is expository. Expository is what we're talking about. Expository text is what we're going to be looking at today. And in science, we've been working on ecosystems. In fact, you just took your ecosystem test, and most of you did a great job on that. So our book today is about ecosystems. But before we start, I want you to open up your reading journal to the table of contents, and we're going to put our new entry. I know that we're working on Serafina in our book, but I want you to skip. Look and see where you stopped in your journal. Everybody's on a different page, so I'm on 19, but you may be on a different page. You need to skip several pages because we still have a lot of Serafina to put in here. I would skip at least seven pages, so very quickly just skip, and then once you've skipped that many pages, see what number you're on and then go on back and put that number in your book. You just know what I mean? All right, go to your table of contents and on date, today's date is October 24th, 2016. And your entry is written right up here. The entry is called Sketch in Chunks. So write that in your journal. Sketch in Chunks and then put whatever page you just skipped to. And if you have extra pages after we finish Serafina, it's okay, we'll fill it in. So sketch and chunks. And if something happens and you didn't skip enough pages, we'll work around it, that's fine. Okay, so whatever page you just said you were gonna be on, um, no, I, yeah, go ahead and open it up to that page and just leave it there. I don't know that we'll glue it in just yet, but we'll glue it in when we finish. So just leave your journal open and push it to the side. All right, so I'm going to give each of you a paper, and I think I've already uh, counted out the little stack of sticky notes. You should have five, and you may need more. We'll definitely use at least five, though. If you need more, we'll give you another one. Okay. Okay. Give you some sticky stomach. I think yours must have fallen off. There you go. Okay, so I want you to open up your book, and we're going to talk about one way that makes reading nonfiction text a little bit easier. Sometimes reading nonfiction books is not quite as fun as reading a fiction book, right? I know you all love Serafina, and you love... Um, Harry Potter and all those fiction books, but a lot of these kinds of books are not quite as fun to read, right? But sometimes we just have to do it. Sometimes we just have to break down and read a nonfiction book, and sometimes you love to read a nonfiction book. Either way is fine. But I want to start, and I'm going to teach you a way that's going to help you read a nonfiction book and make it easier. The older you get, the more nonfiction books you're going to read in school. Like your history book, your social studies book, all of it's nonfiction. It's true, right? And your science books are nonfiction. So we've got to figure out ways that we can understand what we're reading a little better. So let's go to this page that has the caterpillar at the bottom, page two. What does the heading of that page say? Ecosystems change. Ecosystems change. Now, I'm going to read the subheading, it says, Animals Change Ecosystems. Now, everybody follow along, and I'm going to teach you a way that's going to help make your life a little easier as you're reading nonfiction. So follow along. I'm going to read that very first paragraph with you. I'm, well, I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to have you practice some as well. So follow along. It says, In the 1860s, an amateur scientist near Boston accidentally introduced a, the gypsy moth caterpillar an insect native to Europe, into the ecosystem. More than 100 years later, the, this forest pest has spread throughout much of the eastern United States. It feeds on the forest foliage, especially oak and aspen trees. 
In some areas, and in years when caterpillars are most active, up to one-fifth percent trees in a particular forest may die. Okay, so I want you to take your first sticky note, and I want you to take your pencil and think about, and if you need to go back and look at that paragraph, you can, but think about what we just read in that paragraph. I want you to draw a picture of the main idea, and I'm going to get you started on this one. Since this was your first one, what was the main thing that we read about in that first paragraph? What was the main thing? Uh, in that, uh, some amateur scientists released a bug into the ecosystem and it changed it. What exactly did that caterpillar do to the trees? It killed Exactly. So I want you on your sticky note to very quickly sketch. What does the word sketch mean? Draw. We'll draw very quickly. And we're not artists, but we're going to do it the best way that we can. Very quickly sketch a picture of a caterpillar on a tree. And we know that caterpillar on the tree is doing some damage. So very quickly do that. Ooh, that thing has ink all over it. Now, once you have drawn your picture of that caterpillar on the tree, then I want you to write me just a little phrase. It doesn't even really have to be a complete sentence, but it can be if you want it to. I want you to write one very short phrase telling me what you drew. Like on mine, I'm going to write that the gypsy caterpillars damage the trees or they change the environment. So, and if you need to look back, at your paragraph, that's fine. Gypsy caterpillars are pests to trees, is what I'm going to write. We don't have time for that. You're going to have to speed up a little bit. Excellent. Excellent. Um, let me have Rand. Rand, would you share your picture with us? Just tell us what you wrote. I drew that the caterpillars killed the trees. Caterpillars killed the trees. Did anybody write anything different? Or, okay. Very good. Okay, so what? Now, I don't have a sheet like you have. I'm going to use the board, so I'm going to have to go back in a little bit and put it in my reading journal. But the sheet, the mat that I gave you, pull off all five of your stickies and just set them to the side. All right, so I want you to place the very first paragraph picture, and then I want you to draw an arrow with your marker pointing to we're going to the second paragraph. Does that make sense? So you're going to place it first. Good job. And then just take your arrow, take a marker and draw an arrow. I gave you a marker right there. Okay, so let's go back and I'm going to model this second paragraph. Are we ready? You put your marker back up. I'm going to do this next one with you, and then I'm going to let you do a few by yourself. All right, so everybody go into your book and look at the second paragraph and follow along as I read. You can look at your book. I'm holding it up just in case he needs it for the video. Okay, so the gypsy moth caterpillar can harm the environment. However, some animals change ecosystems in a helpful way. When animals such as earthworms burrow through the ground, they make holes that let, moisture, let more moisture into the soil. This helps plant roots to grow. All right, so we're going to think about that second paragraph. It's kind of different than that first paragraph. The first paragraph talked about the ways that the gypsy caterpillars hurt the environment. But the second paragraph went, and instead of talking about how animals hurt the environment, what did they tell us about? How they help the environment. 
So take your second sticky note. And what animal did they talk about on that one? Earthworms. Earthworms. So I'm going to draw a picture of the ground with earthworms. Now you don't have to draw the exact same picture. You are the artist. You're in control of your journal. But it does need to show what you read in that second paragraph. All right, so very quickly. And then after you draw this, I need you to write one little sentence or one little phrase that tells us about what you read. Make sure you put a phrase on there or a sentence that tells what you drew. Okay. All right, let's share. Edie, tell us what you drew. we've read so far. Let's review. Because sometimes when we read a book like this, a nonfiction book, if we read it too fast, we forget what we've read. So let's go back and review. So let's look up here. The first paragraph talked about ways that animals, or insects in this case, um, harm the environment. This animal harmed trees by, by damaging the leaves and it ended up killing the trees, right? And then the second paragraph talked about how the earthworm went down into the dirt and created holes, and those holes that it created into the soil allowed the raindrops, I have ink all over my hand, allowed raindrops to go um, down into the, the soil and help the, the earth, right? So let's go to the third paragraph. I'm going to let you read the, second par uh, the third paragraph by yourself. Have we all put our second sticky on there? Great. Here, put this down so I can see it. Great. All right, so on the next page, under people change the environment, so we talked about how animals change the environment. In fact, under this, these two pictures right here, I want you to very quickly jot animals change the environment. Now, you can do this with your pencil if you want to. the animals that change the environment to what? People. All right, so now we know two ways the animals changed it. Read the third paragraph to yourself right now. Does everybody read? Thumbs up when you're ready. Okay, so take out your next sticky note and let's practice sketching our chunk of a paragraph. So very quickly, sketch what you drew, what you read about.
put your sentence on there or your phrase. Okay. Rand, tell us about what you drew or what you wrote and drew. Um, I wrote, I drew a man planting. Everybody listen to Rand. Planting vegetables. Mm -hmm. All right, so planting those vegetables, what does that do to the animals that did Take live? Away takes away their space, right? Some animals actually can live in a garden, right? But if the gardener the, is coming out, he's coming out and allotted and going into his garden, what's the animal going to do that's hiding in the garden? It, he's going to try to get out. He's going to try to escape, right? So it's really not much of a home for an animal if they keep having to run away from it. So, does anybody have something different? Okay. Uh, I drew like a chainsaw. Hold it up so we can see it. I drew like a chainsaw in a tree, and then that equals the stump mm -hmm. of a tree. And I drew a backyard with tons of grass. And then, and then after a while, there's a box there with a bunch of veggies. Okay. So, what did you write? I I written people change the environment by playing. Very good. And mine, I, I have a picture on my sticker of a garden. A garden has been planted in my lovely stick figure man. He's the gardener. He's the um, farmer. He's planting the garden. But when he did that, we have a little bunny who's running away. So the bunny lost her home. All right. So then we're going to point out. Now you can start circling your way around. All right, now we talked about this is the section where the animals change the environment. What are we in now? Um, Who's changing people. the environment now? People. People. So I'm going to have to write kind of sideways here. People change the environment. All right, let's go on to the next paragraph. Paragraph four that starts with when you cut down a tree. Everybody put your finger on your paragraph so I can make sure you're where you're supposed to be. The second one on that page. Okay, we're ready. Read to yourself. Very similar to that paragraph above it, isn't it? Ready? All right, now when we are sketching in chunks, if we read two paragraphs that are very similar, like those two paragraphs almost sounded uh, alike, didn't it? Sounded very much alike. If we read two paragraphs and they are almost identical in what they're talking about, you don't have to do two of two same um, sticky notes. You don't have to sketch two things. But I think there's one thing that we could put, I think you kind of tied yours in with it, but I don't know that the rest of us did. We all talked about gardens, right? What was the main thing they talked about in that paragraph? What was it? Was how if you cut down a tree, the animals that lived on it that relied on that tree now don't have a home. Absolutely. And that changes their own. It changes how they lived before. Just like the someone needs to ride on them, they were going to have to leave or they were going to have to go somewhere else. And they did not really change, but they did change their environment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Did, you, did it make you think about the activity that we did in science with the limiting factors? Yeah. And we no longer had a home when I moved the desk. That, I thought of that too. But since we're doing our, our uh, sketches, let's go ahead and very quickly. Since we've talked about it before we drew it, everybody just quickly draw a tree. Doesn't have to be very fancy. And you might want to draw an axe. What is the axe going to indicate? Cut it down. It's going to cut it down. And I'm just going to draw a stick figure because that's about as good as I can draw. 
All right. And what, what should we write on that one? What do you think we should put, Edie? Because? Because. There we go. All right. So animals lose their homes because we cut down the trees. I know your paper is smaller than my board, and that's okay. Yours is identical. Okay, we're going to do one more. We could do this for the remainder of the book, right? But we're running out of time, and it's almost time to go to lunch. So let's focus on this last paragraph, and I'm going to read it with you. You follow along. I'm going to read it. The very bottom paragraph here says, Ecosystems can be changed by people on a much larger scale as well. What if a forest fire wiped out a forest? What happens when pesticides kill all the insects in an ecosystem? In Maryland in 2002, it was discovered that snakehead fish, a meat eater native to Asia, had been introduced to a local pond. This new fish, nicknamed the walking fish, because it has the ability to survive out of the water and walk from pond to pond has completely changed the pond's environment. Well, first of all, that's a little bit freaky, isn't it? A snakehead fish. In just a few minutes, we'll look and see what that looks like on the internet. But what was the, the most, the, the strangest thing about that fish that they said? Uh, it can actually it's survive there. on land. All right, so add to that. When, when they say it was walking, His adaptations, right? Well, we'll find out. Correct. Absolutely. All right. So for our final picture for right now, I want you to take your last sticky note, and I want you to draw a picture of the most important thing that we read about in the pond. I mean, in the pond, in the paragraph. But what I was going to say is, don't just draw a picture of the fish. The fish was important, but what was the most important thing about this paragraph with that fish? What did that fish do? That's what you need to show me. Don't just draw the fish. Show me what the fish was doing that could change the environment. I guess what I should ask you is, how did the fish actually get there? Because if we were just talking about just the fish, it would go under animals change the environment. But how, show me how people changing the environment ties into this fish. Write one little line about what you're drawing as well. All right, Calvin. How do, why does this picture of the man and the fish, how is that tied into people changing the environment? Well, see, you know how we eat fish? Mm -hmm. There's like, no 
one can just come out and make a fish. So pretty much we have to go to like somewhere like a lake or a pond, and we have to go out and catch the fish. And like, like they that's changing the environment because there's like we are changing the environment because we're catching the fish, and they don't want to be caught or eaten. You know what I'm saying? Like home. Right. All right, let me ask this in a different way. We've talked about predators and we've talked about prey in science. What did you think this uh, snakehead fish would be? He's a meat eater, so would he be a predator or would he be prey? Predator. He would be predator, right? He would be preying on other smaller fish, right? Mm -hmm. Now, my picture is kind of fictional. I put a fish with legs. I don't think this fish actually has legs. <laughs> But I put it on there so that I would remember when I look back at my notes that it is supposedly a walking fish. It does not have legs, but that's going to help me to remember it. But that fish was never in the pond ecosystem. How did it get there? How did it get there? People released it. People put it in there. If that fish had not been put into a particular pond ecosystem, then that pond would not have changed. So people change that environment. All right, we're going to stop, but what you need to know is when you are reading a nonfiction book, everybody look at me, Edie. When you're reading a nonfiction book, one of the ways that will help you to make sense of what you're reading so that you can go back and review what you've read is to do what? Sketch and chunks. Sketch and chunks. Sketch and, chunks. and then now that we're finished, we're going to fold our paper. I'm going to use yours as an example. We can fold this paper like this, and we can glue it where? In our reading journal. Very good.